Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're going to be listening to the UK's bolt thrower grind madness at the BBC, the earache peel session. This is a piece of underground metal history right here. John Peel, pretty much one of the biggest DJs in the UK, started playing underground like grind and death metal bands on his uh, Radio 1 um, show and whatnot. And some of these recordings are just some of the best material, like the Napalm Death Peel sessions, some of the best material they ever fucking recorded. Especially on the A side with Lee Doran, fuck yeah. But this is, just listen to these riffs and just remember this is 1988. Live recording and hell, even the stuff the BBC does now with extreme metal bands like the um, Southern Lord live recording from 2011 is fucking some of the most beautiful music. Like when it comes to black metal, it's just fucking, it's gorgeously recorded and even when it gets all like, yeah, it still fucking rules. But today, we're gonna go right back in the compact disc carnage as promised with 1993's disembowelment transcendence into the perpetual. But what I'm holding in my hands is the 2005 relapse self titled Complimation. Now, this is disc one. It is the transcending into the perpetual full length alongside um, an unreleased track and two rehearsal tracks. And it's fucking phenomenal funeral death doom at its like pretty much best and most primitive. Now, you might have said, hey, you said their Gotham stream from the heavens is the best. That's my favorite. This is just, I don't um, like, it's hard to explain because yes, their Gotham is very, very important to me on a personal level, but so is disembowelment. And I wouldn't know about one without the other. And so that's just the way it is. And yeah, I stand by that statement. Like this is, one of the heaviest fucking records ever. Like, I really wish I had the vinyl fucking box set, but, um, yeah, $150, I think, it's going for. Like, that's crazy. I'm glad I found fucking this and that it still plays. So that's awesome because I got to listen to, you know, one of my favorite albums, Front to Back, which I haven't done in a very long time. I remember pre-ordering this. I got a hoodie, a t-shirt. I was, I was fucking disembowelmented out. <laughs> like, uh, even in like our, our um, band photo, I always used to feel weird because like, I'm not band photo, like in my band, in our band photo, I'm wearing a disembowelment hoodie, but uh, I would go to like practice and have a, the disembowelment hoodie on, take it off, and I'd have the disembowelment t-shirt on, and everybody would make fun of me and call me a fanboy, and I'd be like, dude, you have no idea, like, and then once I showed my band, like, how good this album is, and we started heading into this funeral doom direction, our drummer decided he didn't want to play slow. But, like, I was telling him, I was like, dude, let's just do what Disembowelment does. Like, they add, like, straight up death metal and grind elements in here. Like, there's parts that's like, am I listening to Mortician? Like, seriously, just straight caveman style death metal vocals. But more of a, you know, concentration on the actual human condition that is death and you know funeral doom and death kind of go hand in hand like from a genre perspective and from a lyrical and content perspective I mean 
this is a heavy album like in more ways than just sonically it's just fucking emotionally heavy and it's just one of those haunting records that really really sticks in the back of your subconscious and whatnot like i remember the first time i heard this on cassette i'm not gonna uh name drop or anything but i'll throw myself out there let's just say we were seeing a friend of ours band play that was signed at the time and uh i thought we were smoking weed at first until i tasted it it was opium so we're driving home and I'm like pretty much I feel like I'm sunken into my friend's chair. I'm not endorsing drugs in any way at all. Seriously, don't do that shit. Again, this was a dumb decision. Like just because a band you like is doing a drug, do not fucking do it <laughs> if you've never done it before and if you have a friend that's kind of a dick and uh He's like, I'm like, ah, oh, you guys smoking some weed? And I just started smoking weed. I was like 19. And uh, uh, and I ended up smoking opium. And uh, yeah, it really, really messed, to mess me up. But my buddy was like, do you want to hear the scariest album ever made? And I was like, hell yeah, man. And uh, we're driving home. And like I said, I was fucked up. But he put on Disembowelment. And Transients into the Perpetual on cassette. Like I remember I was like I was like I was like, you don't have a CD? He's like, dude, there isn't a CD, but there is a CD version. But at the time, I mean, he worked at the Relapse Warehouse and they had found like a box of disembowelment cassettes. Stuff like that happens a lot. Like, if you ever notice if a distro gets, like, out of nowhere, a bunch of, like, CDs or uh, cassettes or vinyls that have been out of print for a long time, and it's like, how the fuck did they get, like, an extra hundred copies of, let's say, Hacked Up for Barbecue, the reissue through uh, Hell's Headbangers? Like, there could be a box of those albums hidden inside of you know, the warehouse, like the old relapse warehouse was huge. And I, I can see stuff like that getting lost, but I remember him putting that on and it was everything he said it was. I mean, at that point in time though, I was kind of on a witch hunt to find this again. And I had to wait until this reissue happened through Two friends of mine that worked at Relapse at the time. One member, I mean, well, one member of this duo that put out the vinyl version of the Disembowelment song, but I'm pretty sure that both of these guys helped secure the rights as well. It was um, Pip, who used to work at Relapse, and uh, Jason from Triple X Maniac, the dude with the. Um, he has like tattooed eyebrows. He was in a local band called Evil Divine a long time ago. But um, if you remember a, a couple years ago at Maryland Death Fest, before it became like a place where bands go to, you know, play their classic records, and it was way more of a focus on like porno grind and like stuff like that, like, you know really underground like filthy death metal i mean you would still get like big headliners but it wasn't as insane as it is you know 15 years later or whatever i mean uh i really need to start going to maryland death fest i'm missing it out i'm missing out on it yet again but let's get back to this like their new um band interlock did a disembowelment set at Maryland Death Fest, and I was going to go specifically for that. And they might have played as Dusk at the time, I forget, because Dusk was the name of their 1992 EP, which came out before their first full length and only full length, which on the insert of the album even says, 
for we shall never pass paths this way. For we shall never pass paths this way again. And I guess uh, they didn't. Certain members did and created Relapse Records Inner Block, who were fucking amazing. One of the better, like, doom bands right now. And they really, really capture the magic of disembowelment. But disembowelment is disembowelment. And from the rehearsals, the demos, and all the other stuff that was included on disc two, it's it's fucking amazing. Like seriously, these guys are from Australia, and I'm sure it was a pain in the fucking balls to get music, especially from the underground back then, outside of tape trading. So they definitely must have had some friends in Finland, but. There's definitely more of a death metal influence on here than a straight up, like, sad ass Funeral Doom record like their Gotham Stream from the Heavens. Like, this has, like, blast beats and, like, parts that are just straight up death metal, but then they go into these, like, incantation style, like, riffing, and then, like, these just funeral dirges and just heavy as fuck and slower than molasses riffs like it will just be like dude just the slowest heaviest it's fucking monolithic like I love this reissue just the plain black with the gray it's just amazing and I really really wish I had the vinyl of this but that's something that unless somebody represses this hey relapse please if anyone watches this please reissue the disembowelment fucking full lane the dusk EP something like more people need to know that this band exists because like I said this is some of the best funeral death doom ever recorded it stands next to their Gotham stream from the heavens let's put it that way they're both fucking amazing records recorded in the early 90s around the same time period 1992 was when the Dusky P dropped. 93 was when the Disembowelment full length dropped. But it's seriously like just grade A underground death doom from Australia. And seriously, so many bands take inspiration. As soon as you listen to this and you realize how special the music really is and it's not just because of how heavy it is like seriously some of the fucking like noises and whatnot that are created throughout this album that help create this very unsettling atmosphere are unmatched even to this day by their newer project Intervlock it's just something about disembowelment, suffocating, yet absolutely crushing blend of death metal and doom that I feel, you know, makes this just a notch above most of the rest. But if you're a fan of Incantation, Mortician, their Gothin, Skepticism, Sentence would be a very 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 if you like sent early sentence you're gonna love disembowelment but hey if you love inner block and didn't even know disembowelment existed hey this is where all that fucking came from and i really really again this is a fucking a plus 10 out of 10 album and it always has been and always fucking will be this this is a 2005 self-titled compilation, but disc one is the first full 
first and only full length. Thanks for watching.